May 12, 2021. So I had a response through email to my last video. I'm going to read it out. Here it goes. Dear Petra, I am not going to disclose at this time my personal information and ask respectfully that my email address remains confidential. Just recently, I was talking with a friend of mine and stated, Where are the watchmen? We had a moment there together that really connected something important. Why isn't someone saying, The two witnesses are here? Why hasn't anyone said, The air is cleaner and the water too? Haven't the two witnesses been described as having the ability to unleash as many plagues as often as they want? Is anyone seeing a reminiscent moment of when Moses and the people were told to place blood above their door and stay inside until this thing went through all the land? None of Father's children were harmed. None. Yet it is more important to point at the governments and news outlets calling out their lies and cover-up than to give praise to our Father. Early last year, a lot of very strange things were occurring, one after another. Everyone was sent home, travel restrictions, schools closing, reports about corona, Blatantly, the conversation mutated faster than the actual virus they claim exists. The Pope dropping his Vicar of Christ title, Harry dropping his role with the monarchy, and the most strange verbiage used across the world that Father told me to listen to. Phrases of Trump is unprecedented. What is happening in the White House is unprecedented. This is uncharted and unprecedented territory. This is unprecedented. That is unprecedented. Over and over for a couple of weeks, this phrase was used on old networks. I was told to listen and then told, listen again. I closed my eyes and listened to many of the different news lines. They just informed all of us that they were unprecedented. It most certainly shows more evidence that death and Hades lost their rule over this land. I'm not the watchman, but I do want to share this in this to encourage a watchman of things that they may of things that may and must be said father i'm so grateful to you for so many to have an opportunity to pause their lives spend more time with their family reevaluate their choices have more time with you and for allowing the air water and land to heal as well while many were off the roads and out of the skies. Thank you for helping us pause, so we may give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And that was the end of it. And that's the end of the letter. There were some pretty interesting points made, and I will get back to them in the next video. But I just want to stick with the topic of how does one watches for what father is doing? If you're a watchman, how do you go about um, describing what our father is doing? So let's give an example, a very basic example. Let's say we have a situation where you have bank robbers robbing a bank and then something goes wrong and they take some people as hostages. 
Then the police is called and you get all these different players there, right? So you got the people that were taken hostage. You got the robbers. You got the police. And then you get the news crews, right? You get the networks coming in trying to cover the news. So if you're a watchman, you're basically a reporter. And as a reporter, you have to make sure that you only speak of what you know, not what you think, right? And then, if you're covering such story, you have to pick from which point of view you're going to cover it. You could be speaking of the police, you could be speaking of the robbers, you could be speaking of the people that have been taken hostage. Each of these parties will have their own point of view, they will have their own storyline, they will have something that you can report on. So that was just an example of how it works. We now have a situation in the world where different parties, different actors are having different points of view. And father is one of these parties. And if you're a watchman for our father, then you better search out his point of view in the situation. So just like the letter said, yes, we were all sent home. Yes, the planes landed and weren't up for months. The the boats, the crews, cruises, they stopped polluting the waters. There was a lot of things that were happening that were significant to our father. The earth healing and being cleaned up, the air being cleaned up because of less and less pollution, because everyone was, was sent home, is very significant. People being at home and spending time with their families or perhaps having time for the first time in many years to spend time with the Heavenly Father is very significant to our Father. So these are the things that you as a watchman for our Father should be informing everybody. Here's another example. And this is very, very serious, okay? So first of all, just because something looks prophetic, just because something looks as if it is a fulfillment of scripture or prophecy, it doesn't make it so. There is such a thing as forcing a prophecy. You can read about it in Daniel 11. Forcing prophecy is an act where a text with prophecy that may or may not have been fulfilled in the past is picked and Events are manipulated in a way that to an onlooker it looks like such prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. And a lot of, lot of um, assumptions about where we're at were based on the elites basically faking a prophecy or forcing prophecy to be fulfilled. So just because something looks like a fulfillment, it doesn't make it so. You have to go to our Father and inquire about it. You need to search it out. One good example is the obsession of Christians with the modern state Israel. 
Just because somebody named a piece of land Israel, it doesn't make it the biblical Israel. So right now, in the last few week or so, three weeks or so, there were some events in Israel. Um, I think there was an attack of Hamas or whatever it was. 300 people dead. And there are certain channels, there is certain uh, push to see these events as a fulfillment of certain prophecy. There is a push to take the narrative and make what is happening on the ground now in Israel as some kind of sign, as a fulfillment of something, okay? So if you're a watchman for our father, uh, you might be tempted to speak about these things, to account for them, to take them seriously as some kind of sign of where we're at. But here's the thing. The promised land that Joshua and others came into was on the east from the River Jordan. So imagine the River Jordan and it, it has an eastern side and it has a western side. Modern state Israel is on the western side of the River Jordan. So what has that to do with the Promised Land? Nothing. It's something else. The Promised Land is the modern state of Jordan. That is the actual physical location of the Promised Land that you read about in the Bible. So what is happening West from Jordan is not prophetically important. It's got nothing to do with our father. It's got nothing to do with our story. And yet, most Christians believe that it is important. And they pay a lot of attention to it. Do not give it any credit. Do not acknowledge it. Don't get attached to it. It has nothing to do with us, with our father, or with our story. It's just people killing other people. So as a watchman for our father, he wouldn't be informing anybody of these horrible events as if, as if it has anything to do with our father. It does not. I was also supposed to include a message from our Father to you and a song for Father's children. You will find the song, the link to the song in the description of the video and also in the first comment. And the message is very simple. I am yours, and you are mine. 